All right, welcome back to the electric Land Cruiser. So now that we got the transfer case in there mounted, and uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough, we're gonna turn our attention to the motor. So I've got my custom machined adapter plate on here. And now this plate is so that you can adapt to any sort of manual transmission or uh, other kind of gearbox uh, maybe. But what I'm gonna do is because that, uh, and because the black box requires a drive shaft input, I'm gonna have a flexible drive shaft made that will mate between the output of the motor here and the input of my transfer case. So I got this from uh, user Bratitude on the DIY electric car forum, and it fits on there really nicely. There's no play or nothing in there. And so that's uh, basically the adapter. What I, this is steel, hardened steel. So what I'll do is I'll have the drive shaft shot weld uh, onto here to uh, get the, the new drive shaft onto the input of the transfer case. So that's my plan at least, and we'll see how it goes. Right now what I'm gonna do is test fit this guy into the new motor bay underneath the cowl, and we'll see how it fits. We'll see if we can fit the inverter on top of it. I don't think we're gonna be able to fit it on top. Uh, so we're gonna have to do something else because you can see in here, those are the three plugs for the from the inverter to the motor because this is a uh, AC motor, remember? So it's got three phase input and a three phase AC basically. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna make those connections since on the inverter it like sits on top and those just plug in. So we'll go ahead and we'll test fit it now. Well, it's like a Honda, Honda engine block, not too heavy. It's a little bit bigger than I thought. Like it's it's not fitting exactly how I had envisioned it, which you know is not surprising. I was just kind of eyeballing it and tape measuring and stuff. But basically, in the corners there, on the top, of the casting is where it's contacting the body. So I may be able to just like cut that off and gain more clearance. Let me climb in and we'll get a closer look. So we're about even on the drive shaft output with the transfer case inlet you can see down there. So they're about the same uh, uh, ele elevation, I guess, so to speak. And so now we just have to see if we can get this. So we're impacting, these are for that rear heater, which I'm probably not even gonna have enough heat for the front heater. So I may delete the rear heater. Um, well, I'd like to keep it, cause you know, nobody knows what's gonna happen in the future with batteries and stuff. Maybe heat's gonna be no problem. Um, so I'd like to keep it if possible. But also this casting up here, I think I could just chop it off. And if I chop that off, then it will fit. It will fit all the way in until this casting, which, I, which I'll keep. And you see, there's the motor output. So if I can get it a few more inches in, then I think I'll be happy. So actually it's gonna fit, it's gonna fit like I thought. Cause I really want to see, like I'll stand up and show you if we can get the motor another. So here's like the cowl uh, and the windshield and the dashboard all in there. So just to, so you know what we're looking at. And it, just stand in, just stand in the engine bay, you know, it's normal, normal EV stuff. 
So if I can get this motor shifted back another six inches or so, you can see then it will be, instead of being here, it will then be pushed back to the cowl, which will give me so much more space here and especially like in line with the firewall here, this natural line, um, because I want to build a big rectangular battery box, you know, as close to rectangular as possible, just so it's easy to fabricate. And then that's where I'm standing. This whole area will all be batteries, right? So all this space will be utilized. And if I have this motor, even just a little bit into that space, it's gonna just add more complications. Plus we've got about the inverter and the uh, chargers. And we get them out like the battery, like the 12 volt lead acid battery here, or maybe we'll get a 12, 12 volt le uh, life battery. And then we can put probably the charger or the PDM up here. But anyway, we need to get this thing back a little bit, but I'm happy with it. I'm gonna jump down, I'm gonna take some photos uh, to use as reference. I might start cutting that casting off uh, just so hell, hell yeah, let's get on it. All right. There's my motor. There's my cutoff wheel, my grinder. Am I really gonna do this? Cut this integral casting off. Forever alter the future of this motor. It's never gonna be able to use, use this motor in another leaf. Never be able to put the inverter mounted on top. I haven't even figured out how I'm gonna hook into those yet. You know what they say though, no guts, no glory, baby. Just thought I better keep any bits out of here. Although I'm gonna vacuum this out, of course, before I power it up for the first time. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> just like that. So next I'm gonna take this off, just clean that up. It doesn't need to stick out so much like that. So I'll just clean it up a little bit, maybe take the corners off. Gave it quite the haircut. So now this will clear under that cowl. It used to be the same height as this. So I've dropped it down quite a bit. All right, so now I got that piece chopped off. The motor fits so nicely in there. Uh, I'm still a little bit worried because the drive shaft is gonna be so short. I'm not sure if that's possible to make a drive shaft that short that functions at 10,000 RPM. <laughs> But um, we'll see, like I said before, I can't really do like a rigid solid drive shaft because uh, I would need to ma uh, machine some sort of intermediate intermediary adapter plate between uh, the motor and the transfer case, which would uh, be a lot of work. And also it has to be very tight tolerances. I think four thousandths of an inch um, tolerance uh, so that that shaft when it's spinning is not off center, you know, even by the slightest amount because these electric motors are so precise, so manufactured so um, precisely that any kind of wobble to that, it's just gonna start tearing itself apart. It'll destroy the bearings and possibly more damage to the motor. So for those reasons, I'm gonna use a flexible drive shaft. Um, at least that's my first plan. If it doesn't work, then I will probably have to make that uh, adapter plate, which is gonna be a challenge. But you know what? We're gonna get it done one way or the other, right? So the motor's in here nicely. It now fits just about to the cowl, but it, it uh, meets that you know natural line there of the firewall. 
I'm really happy we've got um, some space there for the high voltage uh, wires to come up or the high current wires to the motor because those are going to be have to have to be heavy gauge wire come out of there. So you got plenty of space for that. Um, maybe we can put the inverter in that spot. Um, I'm still liking it over on the side, but you know we'll see where things like to live. We're gonna have looks like we're gonna have plenty plenty of space to clear the drive shafts on this side. Um, it's supported now with the transmission jack. Uh, so let's go underneath and take a closer look. Okay, so here are the two outputs, or at one output and the other input. These are both, I just measured 25 inches from the ground, so they're both at about the same height. Let's see if I can show you. Well, not really, but sort of. But then also what you'll notice is when I go underneath, they are slightly offset from each other. They're not perfectly in line. And the reason for that is because I was reading, since I'm gonna be using a flexible drive shaft that's gonna have some universal joints in it, you want that to be at a slight angle and that'll decrease the uh, any sort of vibration and wobble that it might have. And also um, because those shafts or those universal joints have grease in them uh, if they are just in one rotation and perfectly straight line for their whole life uh, then they don't circulate the grease inside and they wear out really fast so if you put a little slight angle into them then at either end those joints are getting um, you know some rotation on two axes and they spread that grease around so that's what i'll be doing but otherwise i think it's going to work Right now I have it offset um, towards the passenger side. So towards, uh, I can't even point. So the motor is offset this way to the left side of the screen. And that is because it seemed natural to have the coolant hoses, which are over here on the left side or the driver's side. Um, it seems convenient to have more space for them there. But I also am concerned about the drive shaft that's gonna go from here on the transfer case and it's gonna go just past uh, the motor here to right here to the yoke, uh, if I can film this. So right down here to the yoke. Um, and so it's gonna have to go right past this motor and any flexing or anything that's gonna go on. Um, so it doesn't really matter for the drive shaft, I don't think if I, uh, well, that's right, if I, have it to the left or the right it's going to be some distance either way so what i'll do is i'm going to start having the man the drive shaft manufactured and then i'll put on this drive shaft here and probably try to measure my clearances and make sure that i'm still uh clear because i think the tail shaft of the transmission the factory transmission is a lot smaller than this motor definitely so um also there is some metal here on the side we can cut off if we need to i like to maintain it because i like to use these bolts um, as part of the mounting system i think i'm going to use this aluminum plate as a part of the mounting system and then i'll mount it on the back and this motor is going to be um, mounted you know um, rigidly to the chassis uh, probably use some rubber isolators but otherwise it's going to be pretty rigid Hey, okay, so I guess I should show you what I'm working on. I've uh, kind of been having a rough day, so I've just been working and not really filming, but I decided, or figure that I should probably film at least some of it, so. What we're doing is I got the motor here, the, uh, it's the Nissan Leaf motor. I got it upside down and I've got my adapter plate on here. And also what I'm doing is uh, I've got some bolts through it and now I've got these uh, pieces of angle steel on here. You can see I've got two of them kind of sandwiched back to back. Um, so I've got the two bolts on the front here. Uh, those are 10 millimeter uh, bolts, so they're pretty strong and I will upgrade those to like grade eight or 10.9 uh, uh, or whatever it is for metric. And then I had to grind down a little of the motor casing here so that the plate would sit nice and flush. Uh, this this place here would sit nice and flush against the motor. And now what I'm doing is I marked out and I'm drilling some evenly spaced holes 
uh, because what I'm gonna do is drill these out to 10 millimeter also, and then I'm gonna tap them so that I can put down some, some fasteners, uh, four fasteners here and two in the front face of the motor. And I think that's gonna be good for mounting this side of the motor. And then this side of the motor, what I'm gonna use is just the, just the factory Nissan mount just like that and then there's a rubber uh motor mount that goes there and then i will fabricate something to hold that side in the chassis but on this side there's nothing so i gotta fabricate it and then i also got these heavy duty uh dense rubber um these are exhaust hangers but i think that my idea is that i'm gonna put them here evenly spaced and then uh that will be my in isolation uh, between this piece of box steel, which will go across there. And then this I will weld into the chassis and then I'll probably put some slots in it so that I have some adjustability to the motor. So that's what I'm working on now is the uh, mount. Now this rubber, I may have to change out in the future. I was just looking for some high density rubber uh, locally that I could start working with it. Cause there are some things on Amazon, but I just wasn't sure. Um, but I might have to switch this out in the future. The good news is like any kind of rubber will work. Uh, that's about it. I'm just gonna keep working and uh, show you the finished result when it's all, all done, so. You can see the splatter here. So I got um, weld through primer, like zinc primer, and it's supposed to be weld through, right? And that's what all the YouTube pros, they like spray that stuff on all their parts and then they just weld right through it and it looks great. But every time I use it, it ends up the welds look crappy and it blasts all over the primer. Um, and also this, these welds are actually ground because I've been using this stuff and, and then I just grind what I'm gonna weld and then weld, you know, not through it, but just next to it, but it still screws it up. So what am I doing wrong with that weld through primer? Is it for a different time, type of welder than a MIG? Uh, do I need to turn up my gas? Uh, is there some other issue or is it really just, that's the results you get and the, the YouTube guys just make it look easy. Um, so anyway, you can put your answer down in the comments below and I'm gonna get back to drilling and welding. All right, so I found the center of this box and I laid out my slots that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna drill two holes next to each other and hopefully end up with some clean slots. We'll see about it. All right, so I got my slots They're about an inch long. Just give me a little wiggle room because uh, when I get that custom drive shaft in there, I'm probably gonna have to move it around a little bit. So I wanted to give myself plenty of wiggle room. And then on the other side, I've got these big holes drilled out so I can get my tool down in there. And then I got it all cleaned up. I'm gonna throw a coat of paint on it and put it up to dry. And then I think that's it for tonight. And tomorrow I'm gonna go buy a tap, tap those holes, put some bolts in them, finish welding that thing and hopefully do a test fit again in the Land Cruiser. I do not, I don't think I want to weld this in there for good until I get my drive shaft made and so I can play with it, make sure it's going to fit, but I'll probably tack weld it into the chassis. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm doing the drilling and tapping. I got my drill, put a piece of tape on there. So I drill the same depth to every hole and I already tapped one. Uh, now I'm almost about to finish the second one and then I'll do the third and fourth. Then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll put all four of those bolts in. I'll snug up these bolts nice and tight and then I'll weld uh, these two fully together. Uh, probably some stitches uh, and then that way that I'll hopefully keep it from warping and um, it'll be easy to, to unbolt and go paint. So uh, I'll start doing that now. So if you ever tap anything, 
you want to just go real slow and listen to what the metal's telling you. If it starts to bind up and get tough, just give it back like a quarter or an eighth of a turn. Uh, let it cut, but also you got to back it in like, like I'm doing now. So for every half of a turn you go in, you've got to do a quarter turn out basically. All right, so I'm gonna finish out the welding on this guy. So I think I'm just gonna do a couple stitches. I'm not gonna weld the whole thing because uh, it's not needed. I don't wanna put too much heat and warp it. And also I've read that they can propagate cracks, which is probably not a big concern for me. So there we go. Man, this weld through primer is just, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it's not working for me. I'm gonna try to clean it up some more. It's a little bit better. Ugh, not very good. Man, I'm not gonna use that weld through primer anymore. Every time I do it, it's, it's just shitty weld, so. I don't know what I'm doing wrong or if that's just how that stuff works, I don't know. But I'm gonna flip it over and we'll do the other side. All right, this side I cleaned up with the wire wheel, so hopefully we'll get better results in the welding department. I just didn't have the gas high enough, I guess. Those look great. The first ones look like crap. See that one, and that one, and that one. I had the gas the right uh, setting and everything, but these two, I didn't have enough shielding gas, so they're just contaminated, I guess. Well, anyway, that, that concludes the welding on this part. Let's move on to the next part. All right, so I mocked up my front drive shaft so that I could make sure that I wasn't gonna run into any clearance issues. And my original plan for my cross member is not gonna work, um, but I got another idea. I'll have to do it. Instead of down low, it'll be up higher um, at the top of the frame rail instead of towards the bottom of the frame rail. So that'll be fine. Uh, but you can see there, that's the front drive shaft. So I'll still have the motor here with the input in, and I'll just need to make sure I got enough clearance because as the front axle articulates and moves up and down, uh, you know, as you hit bumps or go over uh, obstacles off road, then that drive shaft is gonna go up and down. And um, basically, if it contacts anything, uh, it can be damaged, it can get out of balance, uh, it can damage other things, or like the worst thing is it could come loose and, and whip around and, and destroy all sorts of stuff. So I gotta make sure that I clear have enough clearance around that. Everything's strong, everything's gonna work. I think I got a plan. Um, so I'll walk you through my, what my plan is. Okay, so instead of using that that bigger box steel, I'm gonna use this square box steel. It's substantially thicker wall. And then this will be my cross member and it'll go more like here. Before the cross member would be in this area, but that's where the, the drive shaft needs to live. So. It'll be up here a little bit. And then this, I'm uh, cutting the bracket that I made, but I will weld this so it'll be more like that. And then this lip here will rest with the rubber bushings. Hopefully it'll fit just nice and tight like that. So that's the plan again. We'll see. We'll see what the end result is, but I think this time it's gonna work. So I'm cutting up my perfectly, cutting up my welded steel. Sad day, but that's how it is sometimes. Gotta start over. Dude, I love electric car. I love electric vehicles, man. Look at, look at this. Look how small that thing is. This is so cool.